Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Nunez. I'm the CEO here at ScanCo. Uh, I want to thank you all for carving out uh, time for our presentation today. Uh, I wanted to, to also introduce uh, Philip Hall, who it will be running um, the presentation, and Andrew Neal, our Director of Partners and Alliances, who will also be joining us and talk a little bit about PM Plus and what we're doing with it. Um, I, I wanted to start this webinar because I'm really excited about what we're talking about today. Um, while made to order is a much needed enhancement of production management, you know, functionally it's, it's a, a sales order to PM integration. Uh, to be fair, our made to order will bring over a dozen uh, additional enhancements that no one does in the market today. And Andrew's gonna talk a little bit more about that. But um, uh, what, what, this, what I'm really excited about is what PM Plus represents. Uh, and to me, um, that's about, that scan goes back in the, in the business of innovation. Um, over the last six months, we spent well over 10,000 hours fixing our products, fixing bugs, enhancing our support, um, and entirely rewriting our infrastructure to a, a more modern and state-of-the-art uh, platform. And we are uh, almost completely done with all of that effort. It was a tremendous work effort. And now we're ready to do the things that we've always wanted to do, which is expand our portfolio, enhance the current product set. So over, over the next six months, uh, that will be our complete focus. Um, not only will we aggressively expand this particular product suite in PM Plus, but also warehouse and, and OM and mobility. And we're going to introduce new products. You're going to see a lot of new things in the in, in announcements in the coming weeks and months. And then we're going to take things like PM Plus and expand them aggressively. Um, we're going to do a lot of new innovation. And that's what we're going to be all about going forward. So I'm really excited because PM Plus represents that first small step into doing what, we, what we've always wanted to be and do. Um, and that's expanding our solutions, you know, outside the four walls of the production management facility and the warehouse. And we're gonna be doing that really soon. So I'm excited to announce that. Um, and uh, what we're gonna be doing um, is to me, uh, something that um, is, is maybe long overdue. I mean, you guys all know ScanCo. Uh, we were always known for our innovation. Um, and over the last few years, we've, We've, we've had to you know, do a lot of the things and struggle to get to a place where we can get back to that. So I'm, I'm excited to say that um, we're in a place now where we can really fully say that we're there. So let's talk about the agenda a little bit. So uh, first, uh, we're gonna talk about why plus. And to me, um, you know, production management has a lot of things that we, we need that need to be improved. It's, I think it's a great release, there's over 600 customers that are successfully using this today, but there's a lot of things that need to be put and enhanced in this product that, um, that need to, uh, to make it available to the, 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 the customers who are on uh, work order day and the customers that you know, are looking to do um, production management in the way that they wanna do it. So what we're gonna focus on is um, helping solve the problems for today. And that's not just about feature functionality. I mean, we also acknowledge that Supporting this product is something that um, we, that that ScanCo is uniquely uh, able to do. Sage will always be your first line of support. They're taking over the the code in the product, so they're going to understand it fluidly, and they're doing a great job of first and second line support today. But for us, we also know that there's a need for direct line to us, and so a part of the plus operation is that we're enabling that. Um, we're 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 taking that on, and Andrew's going to talk again more about what that means. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, the details and extras and the things that um, are a part of what this product is and the, and the, the SaaS offering for it. Uh, Phil's going to take us through uh, a product tour, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, questions. Now, just so you know, uh, we're also going to be doing a, uh, a, a customer um, webinar with Sage uh, sometime in early November. Uh, that'll be specifically going through PM and PM+. Plus. Uh, and we'll, so we'll have a lot more details about the uh, additional functionality and some of it we might have already created at that point. Um, but the, a lot of the things that we're gonna be talking about today um, that we're, we're looking on the roadmap for this particular product suite. So with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, not Ross Allen, to Andrew Neal, um, who is our VP of uh, Partners Alliances. We gotta fix that. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Andy. And good afternoon, everyone. 
just as Andy said, my name is Andrew Neal, and I'm the director of our Partners and Alliances here at Scanco. And uh, just as Andy was alluding to, we are extremely excited to show and highlight what we have been working on with PM Plus. So before we really discuss the features and functionality of PM Plus, I think we first need to understand why uh, we made PM Plus. And to kick off that conversation, I really want to spot, put a spotlight on the roadmap that Scanco uh, has really put together. And you know, Scanco is a company focused on innovation and really bringing simple and robust options to the Sage market. As part of Scanco's journey, we made this commitment back in Q2 of this year that we were going to bring to market an add-on product for production management. And after months of gaining feedback from the partner community and end users alike, we're really happy with the initial release and what functionality we're able to bring to uh, the users. You know, looking beyond to uh, Q4 and even 2022, Scanco is not looking to only maintain its current product portfolio, but really extend beyond the four walls of the warehouse. And we're really excited for all of you to join us on that journey. And as you can see in this product roadmap, next on our list will be to completely revamp products like On the Water, PM2000, as well as bring simplified SaaS pricing options so that it's easier to take advantage of these products when they fit your needs. You know, just as Andy said, our commitment to making sure we have the most robust and reliable software on the market should really give you the peace of mind that when you're investing, investing in your business, that Scanco is the perfect partner to scale with. So now that you understand where our focus is as an OEM developer for Sage, we want to highlight why we decided to bring, uh, to, bring the, to market PM Plus. And to understand that better, we first have to understand the manufacturing solutions available within Sage today. You know, for over 20 years, the work order module served thousands of make to stock customers. And if you wanted make to order manufacturing from Sage, your only option really was to go to operations management, formerly known to some of you known as job ops. And then fast forward to 2019, when we were contacted by Sage, to, contracted by Sage to create production management, we wanted to create a hybrid of those solutions, a make-to-stock solution with logic built in that provides a foundation for make-to-order manufacturing enhancements. And the evolution of this product is what, what has really transpired into PM Plus, a marriage between work ticket creation and sales order. This enhancement is specifically engineered uh, to enhance the functionality for Stage 100 production management users, giving production management added value to now to track manufacturing transactions in a more efficient way, allowing users the ability to create tickets from sales orders or even explode sub-assemblies, which I know is gonna be an exciting feature for, most, for a lot of you. So now we know why PM really was created and who it's really made for. So let's review some of the features and additional details before we move on to our demo. And this is just a list to highlight some of the features included in Scanco's PM Plus. Uh, users that own PM Plus will have the advantage of creating work tickets for procurement types that are not, uh, that are not made to order, giving you the flexibility uh, to, with your workflow to be able to have that added, added flexibility. You can also match the order type to work ticket statuses as well. You know, so for instance, if you have a standard or back order, it can be set to open, or you know, maybe if you have a quote, uh, that would equal to an estimate. PM Plus also supports all the production management auto release functions that you see here below. Auto issue labor, materials, or even printing activities like work ticket printing. Some other great features is that specific order data is also going to be included in Crystal Report work tables, giving you the ability to take this information and make custom reports, which is also going to be extremely useful. And I think the, you know, my personal favorite feature is when you're creating from a bill of material, the user can actually enter in an effective date and determine if they want to explode subassemblies. There is much more to see, so I'll save that for our demonstration. So the next part is how much is PM Plus? Is this an upfront license cost with maintenance and support? Is there a SaaS option? Do I need professional services? All valid questions I'm sure a lot of you are thinking right now. And to answer that, PM Plus is a subscription only product that is priced at $270 a month for unlimited users. At $270 a month, it's essentially a steal. So you know, what are you really getting with that $270 a month subscription? Well, with your subscription to PM Plus, users will get one full year of software support and updates. And on top of the software itself, 
Our team here at Scanco is also including assistance with configuration, go live, and troubleshooting with PM Plus. And we're not stopping there. For those of you who are interested in seeing a demo or even purchasing this product, for the first 30 customers who purchase PM Plus, we are awarding these special customers with a re reduced monthly rate as part of this product launch. So Andrew, you know, this all sounds great. I wanna see a personal demo or I would like a quote for your prom promotional offer. Where do I go and who do I contact? And to answer that correctly, we would first direct you to your, your dedicated account manager here at Scanco today for more information. And if you are really unsure on who your dedicated account manager here is at Scanco, you could simply email sales at scanco.com and our team will be happy to get back with you to set up a complimentary call to go over all of your questions. After our demo today, a recording of our webinar will be sent out to all attendees and starting October 8th, which is just about two weeks from today, we will open up PM Plus to the public as our initial release. As such, Scanco software will also be supporting PM Plus, giving you the security that you know the ones who actually develop production management are the ones who are actually supporting your chosen PM Plus enhancement. The last minor note that I want to review very quickly is the time to implement. And this enhancement, while robust, is extremely easy to install and set up for a com from a configuration standpoint. You know, once you have your uh, workflow solidified, users can connect with our Scanco team to help with questions around configuration, or even in the case you're a user who is more independent, our user manual will assist you with ensuring you are choosing the best option for your needs. And in, instead of implementations that are even weeks or even months long, this enhancement can be up and running in an extremely short period of time. So wrapping up my portion here today of the presentation, I wanna leave you with a few teasers of what's coming up next with PM Plus. As we said initially in the beginning of our presentation, we're focused on growing our product functionality and PM Plus is really no exception to that. We are already in discussions to integrate PM Plus with Multibin, uh, based off of user feedback, we've also heard that you may want things like capacity-based scheduling or even outside processing. And as users and resellers of Stage 100, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your ideas. We want your constraints. And most importantly, we want you involved in the future of this product. If you have any ideas or if you would like to have a call to discuss the possibilities within PM Plus, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, contact your dedicated account manager or email at, scanco, at sales at scanco.com and we'll be happy to schedule a call with you. So enough of the information. Now I'm gonna turn the controls over to Philip Hall of Scanco Software. Philip is a great account manager here at Scanco and is a perfect person to run us through PM Plus. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn things over to, share, to Phil and take it over, Phil. All right. Let's see. There we go. All right. Thank you so much, and and welcome everybody. Um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to be careful because I am really excited about this. Uh, being one of the account managers and being on the front line, uh, I field a lot of questions around production management and the old work order efficiencies and make order and job ops. So having this solution and being able to deliver it to you today. Uh, it is really special and really important. So I'm gonna go slow. I've got some notes to make sure I say things exactly as I should uh, to make sure you guys are getting the uh, the correct information. But uh, we're, we're talking make to order, right? PM plus. So uh, the, the whole idea is, is being able to create work tickets out of the sales order module, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, I'm gonna pull open my, my Sage here and you'll see that I'm in my sales order module. All right, and then I'm gonna go to my sales order options and right off the bat, you're gonna see what we've done. We've done things a little different. Um, if you purchase PM Plus, we're gonna give you access to an entire tab in the sales order options. Now, why is that important and what does that mean? You heard both the, both the Andys, Andy and Andrew, uh, talk about aggressively uh, expanding this software portfolio. Look at all the real estate we have here. You know, having an entire panel is gonna give us room for that outside processing, for any, any of the other features that we wanna bring in this to and give it to you in one nice, concise place, um, right? 
Also an additional bonus is it's quicker and easier to retrofit uh, our coding changes when Sage does updates. You know, I, I think you all remember they did 10 product updates one year. So, you know, having this here is gonna allow us to keep things up to date at a much uh, more rapid rate. You know, I think the, the best thing really to do is to kind of walk through the options and talk about them exactly as they are. And then, and then you know, just go in and create a sales order and create a work ticket and kind of show you how that works. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, you'll notice at the very top, uh, the restrict to make to order procurement types. So when we're operating in a, uh, we're gonna add of course to the item maintenance screen, the procurement type of make to order. Obviously they have, you know, buy to order, buy to stock and so on and so forth. But like Andrew had mentioned earlier, uh, we're gonna give you the flexibility to either A, restrict only to make to order procurement types, or we'll allow you to create work tickets from the sales order uh, for any of the procurement types. So give you the uh, flexibility you need to make the right decision at that moment. Um, so so that's, that's nice. Uh, moving on down, uh, make to order creation method, right? You know, uh, we've got our pretty standard uh, creation methods. Our, our disabled is, of course, they're not gonna allow you to create a work ticket. Automatic is uh, when you enter the item code and exit that grid row, it's gonna create that ticket automatically. Um, we can prompt to create the ticket or we can do it manually. So I'm gonna leave it manual because I wanna show you the buttons because I know everybody likes the buttons. I wanna show you the buttons that are in there to allow you to turn your work order module into a make to order um software set so those are the creation types now we're going to come down to the default work ticket class right pretty standard this is the default work ticket class that's going to be created out of the sales order okay uh, an important note here is if you're going to do a copy from and you're going to copy from a, a work ticket template right that template's going to override this all right so you know if you've got specific templates set up that you want to use you don't have to worry about this messing that up this is this is just gonna be an additional piece of control for you. All right. And then the default work ticket status is, is you know, what status is going to be uh, released with this work ticket uh, upon its creation. So, you know, we, we have the estimate, we have the released, but then uh, Andrew had already mentioned, he has stole a bunch of my thunder, Andrew. That's okay, that's all right. It's good to drive this stuff home. This match order type right here is really cool because we, we can match your order type. So work ticket status will be set to the open status for sales orders that have an open order type or standard or back order. For sale or sales orders that have an order type of quote, the work ticket status will be set to estimate. And when the sales order is promoted from a quote, we're gonna automatically switch that work ticket status, right? So you don't have to go in there and do that. So we're gonna take, we're gonna make things uh, a little easier for you. Well, a lot easier for you guys. All right, great little checkbox here. I'm gonna leave this on because I want the ticket to pop up once I create it so I can go in and show you all the materials and all the steps and everything that we did and how it ties back to the sales order. So I'm gonna leave this on. If you're doing lots of tickets, you don't want them to pop up every time you just want them out there, you can take this off and your tickets will be created in the background uh, and you can reference them later. All right, pretty standard there. And then our work ticket printing, right? The default report setting. So this is gonna allow the user to have a make to order specific work ticket form and have it auto selected if needed. Also, any of the work ticket printing from the menu or menu button for this is not gonna be supported in this parameter. We can also customize or we also uh, give you, bring in custom fields, additional fields for your pick lists. Um, so we're bringing in a lot of additional information to allow you to add to your crystal reports, crystal forms, uh, work tickets, pick tickets, you name it. So all the printing is gonna be uh, brought in as well. So now this is pretty standard. You guys all know the copy from, all right? So the manual is gonna be, uh, if we create a, a, do this manually, single steps gonna be created and it's gonna use the work tickets default class, default activity code and work center and so forth based on how that's set up. Uh, we can go through a bill of materials. Right, that's what we're gonna do here. The work ticket is creating use a bill of materials if it's available. Any and all options entered on the sales order be used to create the work ticket. So you'll see, uh, I'm gonna select my uh, bill options when I go to make my ticket and you'll see how that's uh, carried over to the work ticket and referenced there as well. 
Uh, of course, if you don't have bill of materials, it's not going to work. Um, so, uh, and then of course, template work ticket template is created using a production management template. Uh, the current revision will, will be used. Um, if the template doesn't exist, you'll, it'll, it'll, you'll, you'll make one manually. So your standard ways of, of creating a work ticket, you're copying it from. Now, Andrew had mentioned also the, the prompt for effective dates explode some assemblies. So uh, if I want a prompt for it, it's not going to be here, right? I'm just going to do it there, but I'm going to leave it so I can show you that we can use order date or current date for the uh, effective date and we can explode subassemblies, which I'm going to leave because I want my, my bill and all its subassemblies and all its options to populate on my ticket. All right. So the effective date, it's possible selection is drop down order date. The selection will determine what is used as the effective date when creating a work ticket. Now, you know, you might have an engineering change or you might have items change in a bill and you might want to set effective date so you don't have to go back there and redo that yourselves. So once that's set in here, that's going to automatically adjust and use that effective date and move forward. So you know the tickets that you're making are going to represent the, the products that you're putting out there in the inventory you have on hand. So, you know, sounds like a lot, but a lot of you are used to this. You've seen it in some of the work order efficiencies and all that stuff. We just make it and put it in one place, make it nice and easy and bring it up to 2021 and production management plus, PM plus. So those are my options. All right, nice and easy. Uh, I'm not going to change anything just in case uh, I mess something up here. But now we're just going to go ahead and uh, and get into it. Let me take down my notes. And I'm going to go into sales order entry. There it is. I'm going to create a new order. I'm just going to use a standard uh, ABC. And I'm going to go to my lines here. And this is where I'm going to look up one of my bills. I know my desktop 0100, 00100 is a bill. I think uh, just about everybody uses this on the um, on their demos. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to stop here. Now, if I have these the the work ticket and the bill options, everything set as automatic, it's going to do this in the background. But I left it as manual because I wanted to show you a couple buttons. All right, so once I've entered the quantity, I'm going to go in here into the options. If this bill has options, I need to sign the options right here, right from the sales order screen. I'm going into these bill options and I can choose these options. And yes, these are uh, the three and a half inch disc. I got a, I think we have a box of these somewhere and they even have scan code written all over them. Some of you guys might have even gotten some of those bundles back in the day. But you know, you want to select all your bill options because of course that's important. If you're doing a make to order, you want to make sure you're billing and, and charging for exactly what you're doing and, and carrying all those expenses over to the work ticket uh, and invoicing uh, appropriately. So now I've selected all my bill options. The button here is the work ticket. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my work ticket. It's gonna give it a minute to kind of go in and set everything up. Then I should get confirmation that a work ticket has been created. So I've got work ticket 95082. If I look right here already, if I go into my, oh, Remember, I had the uh, the checkbox. That's right, checkbox. I was moving too fast. Yeah, I gotta I gotta slow down. But since I had the work ticket check to open, it's gonna it's gonna come up as soon as I create it, so I can just make sure everything's okay. Um, you see, because maybe if I didn't want my yield, maybe someone went in there and messed with my settings. I gotta get that. Can't always assume everything's gonna be okay. Uh, you might be able to, and that'd be great. Um, teach me how. But we're going to let you come in here and 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 you know make sure everything's okay before that ticket is uh, is moved on. And you'll see that right here we've got it tied to the sales order. Okay, we've already got it tied to the sales order. Uh, we support all the auto issue of labor and materials and all of that, like like Andrew had mentioned mentioned. So if you're using any of that, no problem. You'll see that it's populated all the steps required to get the job done. It's gone in and it's brought all the materials needed, not only for the parent items, but all the sub assemblies and miscellaneous items and whatever else it may be has brought that all over to create my work ticket. All right, so I've created a uh, work ticket 82 off of sales order number 66. And I, if I need to print any of the uh, print ticket or work ticket here, this is where our printing uh, integration will come in and, and carry all that information over and give you a clean tickets based on how they're set up and now we have our order and our work ticket and you'll see here on the sales order we're referencing uh the work ticket number that was created uh, you'll also see the options that you made uh, and of course this is pm so 
these tables you can move around and do what you want with. So set up your, your grids and your screens the way you want. Um, but all the information is going to be there. It's going to be there via click of a button or going to be there via some sort of automation based on how you have it set up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is PM plus make to order, right? So we, we made it pretty simple. I'm just going to bring these options back up while I talk about a few things um, uh, before I before I pass it back over some questions, because there's some things I just wanted to that you might not have seen that I want to make sure we address. Um, I talked about the crystal file generation. We're going to pull over customer number, order type, order date, ship to address, and build to address fields when printing. So we'll have all those. We've added additional security events that allow the user to determine which roles will have access in creating work tickets. So you can control who's actually making them. Uh, this is cool because you don't want to be duplicating work tickets or purchase orders. Uh, you know, if you've got some fast paced inventory or orders going through, when a work ticket has been created for a sales order detail line, we will disable the vendor number field. This will prevent the user from cutting a purchase order for that detail line. So, so we're, we're protecting you from, from mistakes that might happen in a blink of an eye, right? We're doing our best to think of everything. Uh, we eat, sleep, and breathe manufacturing and distribution automation. So we're trying to do our best to make sure that we deliver software that, that hits all the points, hits all the pains. Uh, there's two additional areas uh, that you can reference your work ticket number and sales order number. That's gonna be in sales order history inquiry, all right? And accounts receivable invoice order history, right? You're actually gonna have a button there that you can drill into that work ticket info. So if you're doing any audits or you're looking at orders and, and there's a ticket attached to it, you can drill right into that ticket and see what was going on rather than digging around through files or trying to make um, some other uh, sort of query. And then again, uh, the last piece I have written down here, we already talked about it twice, all the PM auto release functionality, uh, labor materials, work ticket, work ticket printing, pick tickets, all that stuff, we're, we're fully supported uh, by PM Plus. So we've worked really hard to deliver you a robust uh, manufacturing solution that helps bridge the gap between the old legacy work order, new production management, and pieces of, of operations management, formerly known as job ops. So I really appreciate your time. You know, uh, you're, you're definitely going to want to see more, hear a little more. You know, the, the best thing to do is get with your, your Sage reseller record, your partner, uh, and, and ask for a demonstration, uh, ask for the first steps. Um, they, they'll put together the pieces and get us involved at the right time, and we'd be happy to, uh, to get you up and get you going. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass the controls back to... Uh, I guess it has to go to Ross, right? Ross Allen, and uh, he will handle, will be Andy or Andrew, but he will uh, handle the questions. All right, boss, you should have the controls. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And I want to thank you, everybody, for carving out 30 minutes for us today. Uh, we do have a few questions that did pop up, so I want to make sure that the, we were able to answer those. Um, you know, Philip, uh, somebody had asked here, you know, they already own some of the manufacturing efficiency pieces um, for the work order module. You know, what happens now if they're, if they're wanting to look at production management plus? What should they do? Yeah. Now, I think, the, the, like I just mentioned, the, the first step should always be your, your Sage partner. You know, they're, they're going to have intimate knowledge of, of not just the work order efficiencies, but everything else you have going on, because a lot of things interact together. And, and we want to do this as a as a group effort. So start with your partner, and they'll bring us in at the appropriate time to deliver our solution. Fantastic. And we had somebody else here. They said, "Is the two hundred and seventy dollar a month the discounted price, or is that the price for the first thirty customers?" Um, and basically, I'll answer that one. The short answer: the two hundred and seventy dollars a month. That is the the uh, the the MSRP uh, that that we're going to market with. Now, for those of you, for the first 30 customers, as we were talking about with that promotional offer, that will be less than $270 a month. And if you'd like to kind of get some more information about what that entails, uh, again, contact your dedicated account manager, or you can email sales at scanco.com. Um, the last question that we'll do, because I know we're running over time, is, um, is this a Sage product or is this a Scanco product? That's a good Still, question. You can answer that one. Yeah. So, so PM Plus is a Scanco product. 
Production management is a Sage product, but PM Plus is a Scanco product. But still recommend you start with your Sage reseller, uh, start the process there. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for everybody for, for carving some time to, to see what PM Plus is all about. We're really excited to be able to meet with you and, and show uh, the, the product to all of your clients. And again, if you have any insight or if you have any ideas as far as what you would like to throw into the product and what you'd like to see next, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll be happy to talk with everyone. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.